just pulled up over here at, on Key Haven, which is the next key up from Stock Island. And uh, we're taking a look at this contender. Nice boat, could use a good cleaning, but otherwise looks in pretty good shape. But we're running at high speed and ran aground. The insurance company asked me to come over here and take a look. Obviously this lower unit probably needs to be rebuilt or replaced. Shafts are bent. This, this one's not too bad, but that other one, that's definitely bent. Skags are broke off on both of them. That's the piece that is down here, usually. You can kind of see one over there. But most concerning is the transom is cracked from here all the way over to there. And when you push on the motors, I don't know if we'll be able to see it here, the crack opens and closes. And we're gonna get up on here. I wanna turn the batteries on and trim these motors all the way up and see if we can get it to bounce, if I can see the transom moving. And we've got some battery switches are in here. Yep, there we go. Oh. Let's see here if that did it. I don't know why this one didn't come up. Hmm. Guess the tilt trim's not working on that one. Yep, it's cracked. So we'd probably have to take the motors off, take the two engines off. They got some kind of shim system going on in here and it's all broken. Uh, you can actually see pieces of metal right here. That's the spacers that they used are broken. So that would all need to be fixed. Yep, all right, well, I mean, I think it's worth fixing. The boat's definitely got potential. You know, I, we'll have to see if the insurance decides. So just talk to the insurance adjuster. Um, we are going to plan on, I have to do an estimate. Uh, we're gonna pull the motors off, turn those over to uh, Keys Yamaha. They're gonna put new lower units on. They're going to put uh, or go through the engines and make sure they're all good to go. And then when we do that, then we'll start cutting. Once the weight is all off the back, then we'll start repairing the uh, transom. So that's the plan. All right, since we were over here this side of the island, we're gonna run by Ocean's Edge quick, check on Wes, see how he's doing on this refrigeration unit. I know it's gonna be tight, but let's see what we can do. I think we gotta go this way. Look at the back deck on this rig. What a beauty. Watch out, first step's a doozy. Wes? Yeah. There you are. Holy moly. Oh, it's in a wonderful spot. Are you kidding me? All right, well, let me hop up there and see if I can see if we can, what we might do is just cut some of those little metal plates off and uh, that I'll get permission to do that. Well, you know what, hold on, I might be able to, you're saying it's on the front? Yeah. Um, I might be able to get at it in here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, that's a thing. I think I can probably get off, you look in there, but I see Yeah, let me look in there, watch. I see that little cover there. Okay. It's got one screw missing, so I'm assuming that's it's got the fins on it and stuff. This is a fishing machine, but geez, man. So yeah, you'll be able to see it if you can get this cover off, okay, which to, one screw there, the screws are already out of the back. Yeah, the whole thing's loose. So if you take the cover off, you'll be able to see the sight gauge. Okay, from the front? Yeah, it's, okay. here, give me a Phillips screwdriver. Right. Take that off. Oh, this is a new unit, or newer. Looks brand new anyways. Here's the screw. I'll give that to you. You got it? Yeah. Big 
Oh yeah, this will be perfect. So, did he say where the control was for yeah. this? Okay. Yeah. Turn it on. So, um, yeah, might as well. So what I'm trying to see is this little sight gauge right, right down here. And it looks to me like it might be pretty empty. Well, there's some refrigerant in there. Okay, I can see it. But we're gonna turn the unit on and see. So what you're looking for is the center needs to be green, which it is, that means that, that it's dry and there's no moisture in there. And then what I'm also looking for when the unit turns on is the flow through there. You want that thing like almost all the way full. Let me just make sure that this is 134. Yep, 134 alpha. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's all kinds of bubbles and it's starting to suck down. So it needs some refrigerant. That sight gauge? Mm -hmm. So do you see bubbles in it now? You're looking at the little round thing with the glass on top and the little yeah. pin in the middle, right? Yeah. And you see the pin in the middle is green, right? Yeah. You don't see anything in there? No. Okay, hang on, I'm gonna turn it off, okay? And then I'm gonna turn it back on and then you, will, then you should see bubbles. All right, where's the control at? And uh, underneath the TV? Yep. Okay. Upper right. Underneath the TV. Hey, did it turn off? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn it back on. Now watch that sight gauge. And let's go hop over here. It's supposed to be having something cleaned up for him and I don't know if it got done yet. Doesn't look like it. You can see the pelicans have taken up residence here. And man, that stuff is hard to get off. So let me find out if somebody's coming. We used to have things like this bird thing and they, they sit on here, but these are all wore out and broke. And they, they're supposed to spin around like this and keep the birds off. You can see they spin like that, but there used to be like four of them on here and now they're all gone. And that one's so corroded, we're never gonna get it off. Man, there's one of those giant chickens. Look at the size of that thing. And here's two more. Man, kind of makes me want to grab them and take them home and eat them. Look at those monsters. It's like a small turkey. Okay, so it looks like our project got delivered to the boatyard. So I'm going to be meeting Matt over here so that we can take a look at it because the motors have now been removed so that we can really get a good look at the back of this transom. See the cracks? Yeah, it's pretty cracked up here. So we'll determine what we can do and create an estimate for the insurance company so that we can move forward with getting it repaired and getting them back on the water as quickly as possible. That's our whole goal here, trying to get our owners back on the water as fast as possible. Oh, you can see it's a cute little boat that it catches some great fish. Just need to get it fixed up a little bit. I have to do an insurance estimate on it. So the transom, they hit the motors, the lower units, and one is destroyed and the other one's damaged. So they're, you can see we have cracks all through here. All this needs to be ground out and chased out, filled and fared. We probably end up cutting a good portion of this transom out. And uh, it's cracked all in here too. We shall see what we're looking at. So we just showed you the transom on this boat. And I'm curious what you think. Should we replace the whole transom? Or do you think it's just a partial repair? That's what I'm hoping for, because to replace that transom, we pretty much have to cut off the back of the boat. So hopefully that's just it. But let me know. 
if you got any ideas about how bad it's going to be or how good it might be let me know motors are off i i'm just gonna i'll take some pictures and i'll do an estimate and get it out to you okay all right sounds good and um are we 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 we're authorized to get started or after you get the estimate yeah okay yeah i'm figuring probably it's a kind of a complicated transom so um you know i'm i'm thinking you know like a month time to get this thing cut out and laid back up and back put together and i'm going to take some pictures really quick of that transom and uh, then i'll have to go back to the office and start typing up an estimate and i also have to talk to the yard to find out what their bill is going to be so we're going to start with uh, we're going to say 30 days for repair period and uh, well that's where we'll start because you know it's an estimate you never know what we'll find once we really get into it So I just pulled off part of the rub rail back there on the transom of the boat just to see what was underneath there. And sure enough, there were some cracks that travel underneath there. We'll do the estimate, like I said, but it's gonna be really, we won't really know wh where we're gonna end up at until we get into it and start chasing those cracks out. But that's the way it works with insurance estimates, you know? I try to be as accurate as I can, but you know, what if I open that up and then next thing I know the whole transom's ruined and I have to cut the whole back of the boat off? That's a whole nother ball game, so. We'll see what happens. So I'm over here at the boat yard and I'm going to see what Tom is doing. He started um, taking away and grinding out the cracks on that contender. And we wanted to show you what it looks like to see how deep it is. That's how we're really going to determine how much damage there is. And today the weather is probably about 80 degrees. It's partly cloudy, but it's beautiful. You, you can see my hair is blowing because it's a little bit windy over here, but it feels pretty good so far that the sun is covered up. All right, let's get back to seeing what Tom's doing over here. This one, of course, is gonna have to go all the way back down. But the cracks that you stand over here were- Just on the surface. Just on the surface, yeah. Cool. Tom has a long ways to go since he's just starting, but I wanted to get an idea of how it looked on some of these damaged areas. Yeah, I imagine that, that these cracks here, as you can see where the whole in deck joint is, it, and that's where it kind of popped and failed right there. Mm -hmm. So I got to dig that out you know, somewhere back here so I can get a good bond for everything. Sure. These ones on the inside were just little nicks you know chips and shit so i figured i'm doing all of this you don't want to mm -hmm. i can't leave that and then like th this too it looks like i need to dig dig that out in that corner and i didn't do it as bad over here but there's two little tiny cracks there and one tiny little crack right there tom's just saying that he might need to have some extra color to be able to match the back end of the contender. Yeah, Seeing some of that dry glass. Yeah, I would just. I'm sure that's been there for a while since it sucked the the sun sucked the resin out of it there. Yeah, I would just since we're doing all this other, might as well just touch that up. It won't take any time. Oh, it's looking easy. So it'd be nice, yeah. And these appear to just. It's hard to get in that corner with that grinder. Sure. I, I got the Dremel in there. I'll mm -hmm. probably go grab, but... Yeah, I can't imagine full speed and hitting something, you what, know? What was on the back of here? 250s? Um, 300s? I'm not sure. Yeah. But it probably does 40, 50 knots. Sure. So Tom's going to start uh, working on that area that has that deep crack. That's the one I'm really curious to see what we might find underneath. I'm just kind of stepping away from him because I forgot a mask. Just gives him an opportunity to do it without me right on top of him as well. Today for this job, he's using our Makita. We use a lot of Makita. They seem to be really dependable tools and we buy them from uh, here in Key West, a small family owned business. QS Electric, we're famous for going in there for all kinds of tools to support them. Up here. 
here too. Mm. Looks like it's pretty cracked inside there, huh? That goes all the way. That was a big boy. Yeah, huge. Looks like the fiberglass is just brittle, huh? A lot of gel coat. The glass warehouse. And I've hit the transom right there, bare glass. Mm -hmm. I've hit the top of, mm -hmm. of the hole and duct joint. Mm -hmm. And you see all of that, that's all gel mm -hmm. coat in there. That's why that, that crack, you know. So you can see here on the contender, we've got another coat of gel coat on here. Tom's gonna come over here later today and finish sanding this out. And we'll start, maybe do one more skim coat if we have to, but um, we should be ready to start compound buff and get this looking good. Did some fixing there in these corners and this down here we did. So we'll get that all straightened out. I have to talk to the owners. They wanna talk about electrical, electronics, and uh, maybe some beautification as far as uh, buff and wax the whole boat so we'll see what happens can you guys believe we were able to save this transom well the damage really wasn't that bad we got really lucky on this transom it's built well except for some cosmetic stuff and we got lucky we didn't have to cut this transom off because cutting this transom off would be a, a chore because you can see all these reliefs in here and everything so you'd have to cut like all the way back here all the way down just imagine taking this whole thing off the boat. But we originally thought we were gonna have to do that. We did, we, so, yeah, we did we think we were gonna really. have to take it all the way off, but got lucky and uh, the uh, Keys Yamaha has got the motors, they're working on those. So as soon as we're done, they'll put the motors on. 